Good afternoon. Today is Thursday, April 9th, 2020. Ecclesiastical terms. Today is Maude Thursday. M-A-U-N-D-Y. Maude simply means either one, um, an event when Jesus washed the disciples' feet or two, a feast. If you go with the feast definition, it fits more appropriately for today. Um, that being we're in the midst of Passover. For those who don't know, Passover is the event that took place in the Old Testament in the book of Exodus when the Israelites were told to put the blood of the lamb over the top of their doorposts. And um, when the deaf angel came through the town, um, as is one of the plagues, they did not strike that house because they saw the blood of the lamb on the doorpost and they passed over that house. So the Jews to this day still commemorate or still celebrate Passover. So Jesus deemed it appropriate in the midst of Passover to have this big meal or this big feast with his 12 disciples. In the midst of Jesus hanging out with his 12 disciples, um, it was there that they instituted the first Holy Communion, the first Lord's Supper, the Holy Eucharist, whatever it is you call it, whatever it is you deem by it. I think, you know, when we come to the table, somebody stands behind it. Um, some people are on the side of the table and we pass out bread, wafers or juice. Some churches pass out wine, not to get you drunk, but to commemorate what took place. Um, the bread represents Jesus' body. The wine represents Jesus' blood. No matter when you take it, first, second, third, fourth, or even fifth Sunday, no matter if you take it every Sunday when you go to church, the table says, do this in remembrance of me. Um, so this is one of the things that we do in the church to commemorate who Jesus was. And in the midst of that, today would have been the day in Passion Week when he did just that one thing. Today also would have been the day in Passion Week when outside of the Lord's Supper or the Communion, when he shared with the disciples, one of y'all are going to betray me. I know who it is, but I'm not going to tell you. Basically, the one who's at the table eating with me is the one that's going to betray me. It's already been in that person's heart because he did it on yesterday. Um, Satan already entered that person's heart. Um, the religious leaders already convinced that person and paid that person some money. So here it is. That person leaves. And party ends. Jesus and a small group of the disciples leave out and goes to this place called the Garden of Gethsemane on the Mount of Olives. While they're there, Jesus is, what he does often, he prays. He takes time in the midst of trouble, and he prays. He gets upset with some of the other disciples and simply said, look, y'all couldn't stay awake long enough while I prayed. In the midst of him getting upset, that other disciple by the name of Judas comes in with some other folk, and here we get the kiss of death. Um, we argue about how Jesus looks. And, you know, some uh, groups say that he was this tall, white guy with blonde hair. Some groups have him as this muscle-bound, black guy with dreads. Regardless of what your ethnicity is and regardless of what your ethnic group says he looks like, here you have to say, well, if he was this tall, striking white guy with blonde hair or this big, muscular black guy with dreads, why couldn't he just point him out? Why did he have to kiss him? He kissed him here because in that day, one, they were all shorter. Two, they all looked alike. They couldn't tell the difference. He wasn't this striking tall guy. He blended in with everybody else. Hence why he was able and oftentimes to blend in with the crowd. So here Judas walks up and kisses Jesus. The soldiers come up and arrest him. Now, this opens the door to the events that happen on tomorrow, but I won't touch that today. Just know today is Monday Thursday. In the midst of whatever it is you're going through, know that this is the day that the Lord sat aside time to sit around with his disciples. He knew what was going to come. He knew what was going to happen. He still took time to commemorate and have a feast and have a meal in the midst of commemorating what they've been through. So remind yourself of whatever it is that God has brought you through to this point in your life and know that he's able to bring you through that moment. He's able to bring you through this. I'm not saying that cliche because it's, it's easy to say this from the comfy of my house, but it's real. Regardless of what you may be going through, and I know it's, it's we in trouble in times. I've heard of people that I know that unfortunately have received that heavenly rest in the midst of this pandemic we're going through. And that makes it even realer than me just watching MSNBC. But regardless of whatever it is you're going through, know that God has brought you through something. And if you're still here, you're still here for a reason. I can't give you the reason why he took somebody home. I can't give you the reason why somebody no longer has an employment somewhere. But I can tell you that he's, you're, you're, you're still here for a reason. And God still has purpose and plan while you're still here. And while you're still here, just take that time to just pray. Take that time in the midst of whatever you're going through and just pray. If we always want to look at what Jesus did, yeah, it was a tough week for Jesus as well. But he took time to pray to his heavenly father. Take time to pray to God. Listen to what God has to tell you. I'm reminded of a scripture. Psalm 46 and 10. Be still and know that I am God. It's funny. They want us to stay in the house. So take some time and be still. 
and know that he is still God. Amen.